For those of you who have followed my channel since 2021 when I took off, you may recall that I posted a copious amount of videos entailing new champions and the supposed overloaded kits. I'm not kidding by the way, I must have made like half a dozen in the span of like a year. Since then, I've been pretty hands off from that topic, only occasionally revisiting it when a new champion came out like Velvet or Cassante. I think at this point the player base has more or less acquiesced to the reality that every new champion needs to have some obnoxious gimmick or be inundated with superfluous mechanics for no reason other than to stand out from the existing however many champions there are. Anyway, regarding the video for today, I wanted to list the 5 champions in League that I believe are or were the most overloaded in the game now that there are so many of them. I have a very good reason for going over this too. Just a moment though, I got something juicy for everyone. Only the greatest sponsor of all damn time, we got Raid Shadow Legends here to grace us with its immaculate presence once again. I'm sure it needs no introduction, but for the two and a half of you who have never heard of the game before, Raid is a free-to-play mobile and PC hero collection RPG played by millions of players around the world. As of this month, they have over 700 unique champions to collect from different factions, races, and playstyles, along with near-limitless content that gets updated from month to month, including dungeons, boss raids, etc. Each dungeon contains a boss at the end of it that offers incredible rewards upon being defeated, and there are currently 12 in the game right now. Aside from events, this will consist of most of your single player content, but of course it is very extensive PvP too, where you can fight in classic, tag team, or the newly added live arena mode which is a real time battle zone for you to rank up in. Speaking of events though, they have a new boss coming out, Akamori the Phantom Shogun, an undead general that serves as a gateway to the new accessory ascension feature, allowing you to upgrade your equipment even further than before. Outside of the game, Raid actually has a new animated series, called The Arbiter, which you can watch on their official YouTube channel right now. For those who haven't tried out Raid before and are interested, be sure to use the QR code on screen or use my link down in the description below and you'll get 200,000 silver, 4 energy refills, 1 epic skill tome, and a 1 day XP booster along with the Knight Errant epic champion to get you started. Thanks again to Raid for sponsoring the video as always, but for now, let's get back into it. See, back in the good old days, around 2014 is when I would say champion design became more ambitious. Champions like Yasuo, Nar, Azir, Kalista, and Rek'Sai pioneered the new design philosophy Rise champion team had and at the time, they were considered extremely overloaded. When you look at Yasuo in the lens of Season 4 League, the idea of a champion gaining a shield just by walking around, having unconditional double crit chance, two really low cooldown abilities, one of which being a near infinite number of dashes, a wall that destroys any and all projectiles that so much as touch it regardless of which direction they came from, and a massive dash airborne suspension screen nuke that gives them 50% bonus armor penetration, gives off the impression that we reached Dragon Ball Super levels of power creep. But in the lens of a Season 13 player, Yasuo is one of the more mildly tolerable champions out there. I guess the moral of the story is that we as a community have become gradually desensitized towards overloading, whether that's due to us being well aware of the champion and therefore having experience to counter them, or because every new champion pushes the envelope on the acceptable constraints to them. Nevertheless, I feel like this would be a fun idea for a video given that I have to somehow cherry pick from dozens of overloaded champions to find out which 5 are the most egregious examples of this. One final thing before we get started, Zoe, Orn, Diego, and Silas will not be included in this discussion because they would theoretically be the most overloaded champions in the game based on the near infinite possibilities, so that would be too easy of a choice to make. Also, this list is not ordered in any way. With that said, let's begin. First champion we'll be going over is Belvet, one of our most recent additions. She's definitely up there when it comes to the amount of stuff she can do. Visually, it may not seem all that obtrusive given she mostly slaps you to death, but when you look through her ability descriptions, you better bust out those bifocals if you want to dissect everything in her kit. Let's look through each ability and see what we have. Passive gives her a near limitless attack speed cap. Using an ability gives her bonus attack speed for 2 attacks, holding up to 6 at any given time. Whenever scoring a champion, monster, or minion takedown, she gets bonus attack speed permanently. Q is a dash in a cardinal direction that deals damage, is an auto attack reset, applies on it effects to the first target hit, can critically strike and has a directional cooldown that refreshes faster based on her attack speed. She can use this in succession 4 times, lining up nicely with her passive. W is a straight line knockout that slows enemies afterwards, dealing magic damage for whatever reason, and resetting her Q cooldown for that specific direction. This is her least offensive ability in terms of overloadedness. E is a stance type ability that rapidly attacks the nearest enemy, during which she gains massive damage mitigation and bonus light steal, all while those rapid attacks apply on hit effects that increase in power the lower the target's health is. Early on this isn't that big of an issue, but late game this thing machine guns you down while making her basically invincible if you don't have any form of interruption. And not only that, but she can cast this on an invisible enemy, meaning it's auto-targeted. And then her ultimate, passively she does bonus true damage every second attack that stacks infinitely against the same target. If she takes down an enemy champion, 
Champion or Epic Monster, it drops a fruit on the ground that she can eat to heal a bunch of HP and deal a huge burst of percent health true damage to everyone. Afterwards, buffing herself up with bonus health, movement, and attack speed for 1 or 3 minutes depending on if it was a champion or epic monster. If it was the latter, all nearby enemy minions turn into allied minions on death, letting you push waves faster than Yorick ever could. This champion is basically Master Yi, but doesn't rely on enemy stupidity to be useful. To give you an idea just how big of a deal this was, Belveth has gotten nerfed 4 times since her release, and she still has a win rate above 50% in time and plus. During her debut, she had like a 55, and the nerfs weren't small either, easily one of the most ridiculous champions in the game right now. Up next, we have Gwen. Fortunately, she's more of an overloaded in theory champion, less in practice, but that doesn't stop her from being extremely overloaded. The only reason she's not as prominent of an issue is because Riot instant nerfs her the moment she has a win rate even remotely close to 50%. Having to remain at a negative win rate just to be considered fair tells you a lot about a champion, and coincidentally, she bears a lot of similarities to Belveth. Passive causes all basic attacks and damaging abilities to deal bonus max health damage while healing her if it's against an enemy champion, so she effectively gets tank busting and sustained purely from existing. Her Q deals damage in a cone-shaped area while applying her passive against all enemies in the center, on top of converting a portion of that damage to true damage. The more auto attacks performed before using the ability, the more damage the ability in question deals, and it has quite a low mana cost and cooldown for how much damage it can do. Her infamous W creates what I like to call a friend zone that renders her untargetable to all hostile interactions coming from champions outside of it that remains fixed in position, so it's not even like a proximity thing. Gwen can be standing right in front of you, but so long as she's in the friend zone and you aren't, you can't do anything to her. Even when inside, she gets bonus armor and magic resist that scales based on her ability power, making her tankier the more damage you build. Not to mention she can reposition this once per cast. Her is a dash with an incredible attack speed buff attached to it, along with bonus attack range and magic damage on hit. And if she lands a basic attack during this buff, a portion of the cooldown is refunded, meaning potentially infinite uptime with sufficient ability haste. Then her ultimate, three waves of projectiles that deal damage and apply her passive per shot. Not too long ago, they changed it to where you can recast the second and third wave without having to auto attack in between, greatly increasing its consistency. The tooltips may not be as long as Belvet's, but Gwen basically has it all. Poke damage, tank shredding, untargetability, dashes, dueling potential, lifesteal, wave clear, durability, projectiles, the whole 9 yards. Some of her more busted aspects like the healing on her passive or the true damage on Q had to get nerfed into oblivion to make her more bearable in the mid to late game. She was by far one of the strongest hyper carries for being an auto attacking champion with AoE damage. As a result, I believe she deserves to be on this list. Champion number 3 is gonna be Akali. Hear me out. Presently, Akali is perfectly fine, but oh my goodness, the history of this champion. Buffs, nerfs, mini reworks, and the sheer number of things they took out of her kit are just insane. It took them years to finally get her into a position where 99% of the player base didn't hate her. So even though she's been fixed, in air quotes, I had to include her on this list in light of her past. Her passive empowers her next basic attack to have bonus range and deal bonus magic damage whenever damaging an enemy champion with an ability then exiting the area, while gaining bonus movement speed for a short time. It used to restore energy with every empowered auto attack, meaning a skilled player could extend her uptime by a significant length. Her Q deals damage to enemies in a cone and anyone caught at the tipper is slowed for a small bit. This ability used to heal her whenever cast near full energy, doesn't matter if it did or didn't strike the enemy. Yes, Akali was an energy champion with healing in neutral. If you thought that was bad, you used to have a hitbox behind her so she could miss the attack and still hit you if you were on top of her. And not only that, but it dealt increased damage to minions and monsters at rank 5, giving her deceptively good wave clear. And not only that, but she could cast it during Shuriken Flip's dash. The tooltip right now looks like a very simple ability, but if you saw this on relaunch, it was at minimum double the size. W spawns a cloud of smoke that expands in a donut-like shape, giving her bonus movement speed on cast and invisibility while inside of it while increasing her maximum energy for the duration. Seems harmless enough until you remember that it used to make her immune to tower detection. She could dive you under turret and not only could the turret not attack her, but it couldn't even make her targetable, so it's as if you had no turret essentially. Also, any targeted ability or empowered auto attack used on her before becoming invisible would be cancelled if she became invisible during the time it took for those attacks to connect. On top of that, she could extend the duration of the shroud by exiting and re-entering stall. On top of that, she can maintain the movement speed buff just by being inside the shroud, leading to a positionally dependent 9 second high movement speed buff. They added a few things to her W that weren't there before, but obviously they were compensatory. Akali's W was one of the most frustrating individual skills in the game, bar none. Her is a dashback that throws a shuriken forward, latching onto the first target hit or landing in the smoke of her W if there is one. 
On recast, she dashes with global range to the shirt again and deals more damage on arrival. This attack used to do hybrid damage at one point instead of only magic. Although thankfully that's really the only major difference between then and now, most of the adjustments were numbers based. Then her ultimate, a targeted first dash that deals damage and then a free targeted much faster second dash that deals more damage based on the target's missing health. Going down the list of changes, the first dash used to be a free target dash, giving a two long distance free target dashes. It also used to stun all targets in the way for a brief moment. Only for half a second, but a stun is still a stun. It also dealt hybrid damage in the same fashion as a shuriken flip. She was absurdly overloaded, and it took the balance team almost half a decade just to bring her to normalcy. I would even argue on release, she likely would have won the title of the most overloaded champion to ever exist in League of Legends history. An assassin who could do anything and everything, that's something I never want to experience again. Next champion might be a hot take, but I think Kai'Sa deserves a spot on this list. Unlike the previous three, she's not overloaded in terms of how much text her abilities have, rather she's overloaded in the number of options she has. Because of the way her kit was designed, Kai'Sa had probably the highest build diversity in the entire game, and throughout history she's had among the most option versatility in the game. Her passive is a 3 hit passive type effect, only instead of 3, it's 5. She does bonus on hit magic damage based on the number of plasma stacks that are on the target, and after consuming all stacks of plasma, she deals a burst of missing health damage on top of that. Due to its scaling, you could decide whether you wanted to use the passive for multiple procs or heavy procs. If you want standard AD carry, this would do high damage by virtue of being detonated at a faster rate, and if you want AP, each individual proc would do cataclysmic amounts of missing health damage. Her Q is an auto-targeted barrage of missiles that scales off her attack damage and ability power, so even though it requires AD to be upgraded, it still gets stronger if you build AP. Once again, this makes her quite dangerous regardless of what you build. Her W is a semi-global projectile that reveals and deals magic damage to the first target struck, and when involved, if it strikes an enemy champion, it refunds virtually all of its cooldown, letting you spend this ability over and over, not to mention that it applies 3 plasma stacks instead of 2. So 2 Void Seekers would also detonate her passive for incredible damage. Back in version 12.8, the AP ratio used to be a lot higher, so throughout early season 12, AP Kai'Sa ran rampant, each of her Ws dealing anywhere in the neighborhood of 800 to 1000 magic damage from semi-global range. Were it that alone, it wouldn't really be all that efficient, but remember, her passive and Q damage also scaled off her AP, so she lost no combat DPS to acquire this poke. Her E is a burst of speed followed by an attack speed steroid, when upgraded she becomes invisible for a short bit. This is her only ability that only really helps her AD form, but the brief invis can be used to reposition herself in fights to great effect. Finally, her ultimate, a semi-global dash on anyone affected by plasma that gives her a massive shield on arrival whether she builds AD or AP. Conveniently, the target range at rank 3 matches the maximum range of Void Seeker, so Kaisa could safely poke you from afar, then once you are at kill range, she dashes in and wipes you out without you being able to do anything. Playstyle-wise, Kaisa had it all. She could play safe and poke you from afar, or play hyper-aggressive. She could excel in front-to-back teamfights or Moonlight as an assassin thanks to her ultimate. Thanks to the number of builds and playstyle options at her disposal, Kaisa was considered very overloaded on release. Compared to the others, she may not seem that problematic, but she was. She most certainly was. You knew he was gonna be here. Come on, it ain't a VARS video without mentioning the champion that's become a meme on this channel. My boy, the 200 years man himself, Yone. Casting aside personal bias, I would actually rather fight him than a lot of other champions, mostly because my pool has a lot of guys that destroy him, but that doesn't exempt him from being on this list. While his balance history isn't as extensive as the others, many people consider him overloaded courtesy of the amount of stuff in his kit. Like Yasuo, Yone reaches max crit chance which is 2 items instead of 5. The trade-off is that he deals less crit damage than usual, but I'm pretty sure still averages out at a net positive. Instead of gaining a shield, Yone deals hybrid damage whenever using his red sword. Q is a carbon copy of Yasuo Q, except rather than shooting a tornado or being a tornado, Yone's third Q has him dash forward and knock up all enemies caught in the projectile part of the attack, so it's a lot like J4's EQ. Both the cast time and cooldown decrease based on attack speed. W damages all enemies in a cone for a percent max health hybrid damage that gives him a shield if he hits something, plus more shield for every champion hit. E. Oh my goodness is E. For dash of bonus movement speed, portion of all damage dealt to champions during this time is dealt again on recast, during which he cleanses all debuffs and hard CC while dashing back to his original position. I've expressed, probably far too many times than I like to count, how much I hate this ability. Is it the most egregious ability in the world? No, there are worse ones out there. But everything about Soul Unbound is just wrong. Especially since it's on a rushdown champion with multiple gap closes. Refreshingly, his ultimate is pretty tame, a long range dash that knocks up all enemies in its path for hybrid damage. In a vacuum, it's a pretty underwhelming ability in all honesty, but in the context of his kit, it's very deadly. He can assassinate entire groups of champions at once. 
No matter how many new overloaded champions come out, I will always hate Yone. Not because I suck against him, I just hate him. That's gonna be it for the list. Before you ask where the hell is Aphelios, I actually don't find him to be that overloaded anymore. True, he has 5 weapons with unique effects, but he can only ever access 2 of them at a time, making him look a lot scarier than he actually is. Much of his balance history was numbers adjustments rather than being able to do too much, although if this was a top 10 video, then he would definitely be part of it. Anyways, let me know your thoughts on my choices in the comments down below if you agree or disagree with them, and feel free to share your own top 5 as well. For now, if you enjoyed the video, I would appreciate it if you left a like and subscribe. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter, at Varsvarem, join my Discord server, and why not check out my 10 champions that should be deleted video, I think you'll like it. But till next time, thanks so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.